What's up everyone and welcome back to Rob's Gaming Table. Today on the table we have a unboxing for the new Dead of Winter expansion, Warring Colonies. A expansion for Dead of Winter The Crossroads board game and Dead of Winter The Long Night, which is a standalone expansion to Dead of Winter The Crossroads game. Uh, so here's Dead of Winter, you guys know, Dead of Winter The Long Night. And here is the expansion, Dead of Winter Warring Colonies. Thanks to the folks over at Asmodee North America for sending this over. Uh, for us to unbox here and eventually do some playthrough videos of each of the expansions uh, including some of the 4 to 11-ish player War and Colony expansion and Lone Wolf uh, expansions in here. So if you want to see how those play out and get some more detail on that, stay tuned to the channel, subscribe, hit that like button, and watch for uh, new videos to be posted uh, shortly uh, with us playing through some of these expansions, similar to the other uh, Dead of Winter gameplay videos we've done on the channel. You can check those out in the Dead of Winter playlist at Rob's Gaming Table on YouTube. Uh, look for some links in the description below. But here you can see the box for War and Colonies. Slightly smaller than any regular Dead of Winter corset uh, expansion box. Uh, you see it's a little thinner because it does not include the full board and all those bits. You uh, you do need um, the one of the corsets to play it at least. You need to own at least one of those games I showed you. Uh, but to get the full potential, you'll need both as we'll see shortly. So let's, uh, let's take a zoom in here on the back of the box and uh, check it out. All right, so here's the back of the box. I've already removed the shrink wrap. Uh, I didn't state at the start of the video just to reduce some of the glare, uh, you know, so you don't have lights bouncing off uh, into the camera. Uh, but, uh, and I have opened it. I did take off a little bit of the shrink wrap inside um, just to get rid of some glare there. But uh, you guys are basically seeing me open it here. I've not read the rules or anything like that. So we're taking a look at this basically for the first time here. Uh, so Dead of Winter Warring Colonies, a Crossroads expansion. You see some of the cool art on the back of the box, some of the cards... Uh, some of the components. It actually says uh, some of the components shown are from Dead of Winter and Dead of Winter to Long Night. They are not included in here, uh, but a lot of the uh, the stuff they're showing you here is from the uh, inside the box. I'm not going to spoil anything. No, uh, no story elements, no crossroads cards. We're not going to look at those too closely, uh, but we will take a look at some of the characters, some of the items. So if you're not into that kind of thing and want to be surprised when you open your box, do not watch this video. Turn off now. Turn away. But come back uh, if you want to see any of our gameplay videos on this uh, expansion to go along with our other Dead of Winter videos. All right, so let's take a uh, read here on what we see on the box. So uh, we stopped being human a long time ago. Humans are dead men walking. We are survivors and will do anything it takes to keep it that way. Dead of Winter Warring Colonies expands both Dead of Winter and Dead of Winter Long Night with new survivors, items, crossroads cards, and crisis cards. Additionally, if you own all three... So you have to have both core boxes and this play the new Epic Colony versus Colony variant for 4 to 11 players. Engage in high intensity battles over resources and territory. Race against time with the new simultaneous play mechanics. And play as the Long Wolf, loyal to none and driven by your own secret motives. So it says actually Long Wolf here. I think it's supposed to say Lone Wolf. That might be a typo. Uh, you'll see in a minute. It talks about a lot of the Lone Wolf expansion, but uh, that might be a typo unless he is the Long Wolf. Um, but he's lone and long. I don't know. But anyways, <laughs> it says, you see here, not a standalone game. Either Dead of Winter or Dead of Winter Long Night is required to play this standard game. And both are required uh, to play the Warring Colonies variant as shown. Uh, and as you see down here, ages 14 and up. There is some mature components to either Dead of Winters. If you have those, which you should have those if you're interested in this game. Um, and you know they usually keep the packs of more adult rated cards for the Crossroads deck separate with little symbols on them you can remove. I don't know if this will do that too, but we'll see. And 4 to 11 players, 60 to 120 minutes. Uh, that might be underestimating as we know from most board games, especially longer ones uh, that are more complex like Dead of Winter. Um, especially the first few times you may notice it goes a little longer than the 60 or 120 minutes. And I assume with 11 players all taking their turns, it might take a little longer than the 120 minutes. Uh, but we will see. Inside the box, you see here, uh, we have 50 crossroad cards, 11 crisis cards, main, 4 main objective cards, 15 survivor cards, 1 sand timer, 2 combat dice, see 8 lone wolf secret object, or, objective cards, 14 lone wolf mission cards, 10 tactics cards, 33 bullet tokens, 15 survivor standees, 1 lone wolf den location, 1 combat tracker, 1 rule book, 1 lone wolf morale tracker, 15 plastic stand D stands 43 random item cards 10 player reference sheets interesting 10 player reference sheets 
but it goes up to 11 players. So I'm assuming the lone wolf does not have one of the regular reference sheets, maybe. All right, so let's uh, open this thing up and uh, check out what's inside. All right, so here we are on the back of the front of the box. We're about to open this thing. I forgot to point out the cool artwork that you probably saw there uh, early in the video, but it's also uh, not just made by Isaac Vega this time and John Gilmore. It's actually also Colby Dolch and Timothy Meyer. Sorry if I mispronounced either of those, but uh, they also have some credits in this expansion. Um, and yeah, so let's open this thing up and uh, check it out. And hopefully, hopefully don't get a, a you know a loud box fart here. We'll see. No, we're good. We're good. Okay, so there is some plastic still in here. I didn't take it all off, uh, so I apologize about the glare there. But uh, I just want to show you guys. It comes in like kind of this resealable packing. And I've noticed lately, actually, with um, some of FFGs, uh, I like when they do this for like uh, Game of Thrones or Legend of the Five Rings, where they have a bunch of pop out tokens, but they're actually shrink wrapped or wrapped in plastic. So if they pop out during shipping, they're not like bouncing around the box and getting damaged. I actually like that when they actually include the cardboard punch out uh, sheets, I guess they're called in um, plastic. And uh, so we'll open this guy here. And you see the instructions here uh, for Dead of Winter Warring Colonies. We're not really going to go in there, but uh, oh, they got an explanation video coming. I'm sure Rodney Smith over at Watch It Played, if you guys haven't watched those, if you're getting into anything Dead of Winter, I'm sure he'll have a video up uh, teaching you about Warring Colonies. So go check out. Oh, watch it played on youtube if you want to learn how to play uh many 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 board games uh, he's helped me out in the past learn some board games quickly and uh send i send the links to other people to help them learn dead of winter before they come over and play uh so go check that out uh, if you're interested you can check it out at plat hat games uh we'll link to the videos also so in here we got some of the components we already went through the components on the back see a little shot of the sand timer there we'll look at that stuff oh man look at the game set up there oh boy so this looks like your two colony boards from both sets. We see the Long Nights version there with the prison and the uh, snowy outdoors there um, for the regular Dead of Winter. And it looks like you got your little track there, your uh, graveyard from Long Nights in use. Uh, it's really cool. It's a good way to spice it up. I mean, there's tons of variety in both of the core sets, but you see the locations out in the middle here. They're fighting over them. And that's what I assumed when I read about this game when they... Uh, Announced the first details in May. And they actually had a demo at Gen Con. I did not get to play it, but I did take a glance at it. Um, but it was kind of cool to see the setup uh, where you can have your two colonies warring against each other. Um, and we assumed that it was in the middle over over some locations. Just similar to, you know, those Dead of Walking episodes. Or the uh, Walking Dead episodes. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, where, you know, you have your, your one colony and they're going into town. And they bump into another colony and they're fighting over the resources or the locations. Uh, it's that kind of thing. And, yep, tells you what you need from uh, each collection to get going. Optional cards. Oh, oh, some optional cards. I'm not going to go into much detail here. Uh, like I said, when we do some gameplay videos, we'll go into much detail on uh, each of the expansions separately. And uh, what we're adding to the game and what we're doing. Um, I just want to show you guys the rule book. Looks standard. Dead of Winter font style layout. Explaining everything. The rule books are usually pretty clear. And laid out very nicely in the graphic uh, design is always well done. The fonts are very, very clear and everything's nice and separated using color. So that is the little tiny Dead of Winter Warring Colonies rule book. And then this one I opened already, just the uh, player sheets. They had a tight plastic on them. I just want to get that off for glare. and So I'm not fumbling trying to open it there. But uh, this is a shrink wrap normally. But you can see here the uh, Warring Colonies player reference are completely different than the other two uh, player reference sheets. So we'll take a closer look here. Uh, so you see the player turns looks the same, but then in the colony phase here, pay food, colony combat is different. Number two there, check waste, resolve crisis, add two bullets. So that's what you must be using during combat. Add zombies, check the main objective, move round tracker. But instead of passing the first player token, you're actually electing a colony leader. And then you got some player actions here, the same ones it looks like with a, do with a die. Looks like a few less there uh, with not uh, an action die. And then it reminds you about the crossroad card. Very important. That gets forgotten sometimes. And you got your unused action dice and used action dice spots together on the left side this time. And then very prominently taking up half the player board is the colony combat here. Combat location order. Colony with the lowest morale. Colony with the highest morale. I'm not sure what any of this stuff means. So you play some tactic cards during combat here. You add survivors and weapons. Plus one strength per survivor with no weapon. 
plus two with one or more weapon. So it looks like fists count for something. And uh, bid bullets. So you must do like a little closed fist bid on the bullets and reveal how much your your side has put into it. Uh, similar to if you guys have ever played uh, Sons of Anarchy. It's probably like, I'm assuming it's like that. Um, uh, where you hide uh, guns, little plastic guns in your hand for combat. And see how much you've added to your, uh, your unit strength basically. And then it looks like you roll a combat die. And then tells you what the combat die results there. So it looks like the hit add this number to your combat strength for this combat. And then the target here is immediately place this number of wounds on a single enemy survivor in this combat. And then the little radioactive symbol here. Add this uh, number, or biohazard I guess. Add this number of zombies immediately after resolving any target wounds. Uh, so that's the player boards. So quite different there. So definitely getting some new play mechanics for sure in this expansion. And like I said, we're not going to look at any of the... Um, the crossroads cards, so I'll try to flip those over there so you can't see. We'll take off the plastic. And, uh, so if you don't want to know any of the characters, and you like going in completely blind, but I guess you'd see their standees at least. Uh, we're going to do a quick glance at the uh, 15 new survivors added in this expansion. So I'm assuming some of these can be added uh, to the uh, either of the other core games. So like I said, if you only own one Dead of Winter course that you can add some of this stuff in and you don't need to do the whole Warren Colonies thing. So we have Ar Ar Atticus Sanders. He's a veteran. And uh, anywhere when Atticus enters play, this may be at the start of the game. Add three bullet tokens to the bullet supply. So you see the symbol down there. Now the, this, there's two symbols there. So I'm assuming the right one is for the expansion and maybe he's only works in the Warren Colonies expansion. So if you played Long Night, they had three expansions in there. And you can pick and choose and add them to either core set. Uh, they have the bandits, the improvements, and racks on modules. And you could put them all in a game. Two of three. You could mix them. Uh, use one out of all three. Whatever you wanted. Or even just play Long Night on its own and not use any of those expansions. But they use the second symbol here to signify the like sub-expansion to the expansion. So if you're playing a certain module or mode, you might not have all this stuff. Yeah. So as you see here, the second card doesn't have uh, that symbol. So we got Hawk Wheeler here. She's a cowgirl. Uh, the non-colony, she has a giant paragraph here of text. Once per round during your turn, you may move one to two zombies from a non-colony location to an empty entrance space at one other non-colony location with at least one empty survivor space. Then move Hawk Wheeler to that location. Rolling for exposure cannot be prevented. We got Scott Wheeler. Must be related to Hawk Wheeler. Anywhere once per round exchange. One bullet token for one food token or exchange one food token for one bullet token uh anywhere uh this is sorry marcus johnson security officer with some super suit here uh <laughs> we're in the future ladies and gentlemen uh marcus adds plus two combat strength in combat instead of one once per round marcus may select one of his equipped weapons and i guess use it it says us it's use it once per round use it's Ability once per round, twice per once per round. Ability twice this round. Oh, I see. Uh, on a weapon must have a once per round ability and he gets to use it twice. That's basically what I'm getting from there. All right, the Enforcer of Vigilante. Uh, looks like a guy from Kick-Ass, maybe. That's uh, where that inspiration is from. Non-Colony, you use the four plus die. Kill three zombies at the uh, Enforcer's location. Do not roll for exposure. Add two noise tokens to this location. Optional. Announce to the other players a snappy one-liner. That the Enforcer shouts as he handily executes the zombies. <laughs> That's fun. I'll try to get that going in the videos. Uh, Alright, Oscar Rios, Auto Mechanic, Colony, if Oscars is your group leader. Whenever you play a Fuel card, roll a die. On a result of 3 or higher, add the card to your hand after resolving this effect. Fernanda Suarez. Uh, she's an artist. Anywhere once per game, spend 2 action dice to raise morale by 1. That is crazy. That is crazy. Wow, maybe morale drops a lot in this version, but that seems uh, pretty pretty powerful. But obviously, you only see her. You know, you're not going to see her every game. But if you see her in your, you know, hand of four characters, and you're picking your two when you're playing Dead of Winter, choose this one. And we got uh, Bernadette Wilson, CEO, ready to go with her gun there. Uh, anywhere, if Bernadette is your group leader, after rolling an action die, you may increase the results of up to two dice by one. 
Father Fitzpatrick, uh, non-colony, you may roll a die before any combat involving Father Fitzpatrick on a result of four or higher. Skip combat at this location. Then he has anywhere. Spend a four or higher die, uh, action die, to remove a despair token from a survivor that shares the location with Father Fitzpatrick. So a nice way to remove those despair tokens from a long winter. Uh, Dancia Walker is a student. Just pack and heat and a knife there. And uh, anywhere you can not perform a search with a Dia, uh, Dan Danica, sorry, Danica Walker. I, I don't know if I pronounced that right. Danica Walker, if she shares a location with one or more zombies when performing an attack with the uh, Danica, do not roll for exposure. Then we got uh, Huang Fen, a retiree. And uh, anywhere Huang Fen cannot move unless a fuel is played for that movement. All other friendly survivors that share a non-calling location uh, with her. Look and keep one additional card when performing a search. So if you can get her to a non-colony location and keep her alive, she's a freaking six plus on both. So she basically just stands there as a support character. Uh, yeah, good luck getting searches and uh, combat with her. She's literally just going to hang out with your other characters. And since she's got a super high 69 influence, she's not going to die very easily when like bite spreads happen. Um, but she will come along with you just to help you carry extra stuff, it looks like. Uh, so that's pretty cool and thematic, but you gotta get her there and burn a fuel to do so. And, uh, yeah, so she can't get bitten or anything, because you're not gonna roll for exposure. You gotta play that fuel to move her. That's interesting. So, pretty powerful effect. We got Rohan Patel, or Patil, small business owner. Anywhere, when Rohan receives a wound, you may re-roll one action die in your unused, uh, in your unspent action dice pool. Uh, when Rohan would receive a despair token, ignore it instead. Then we got uh, Charlotte Ross, a spy. Uh, once per round during your turn at an enemy colony, uh, you may choose an enemy player, but not the other active player, and look at their hand. Choose one card from their hand and place it into your hand. So she's sneaking in and stealing stuff from the other base. That's pretty cool. And uh, look, she has this little target on her. So this... These guys with the targets must be the ones only allowed to be used in warring colonies. Uh, so when you're battling the, you know, you're playing that full out four player plus mode. So, so far we got Scott Wheeler, Atticus Sanders, now Charlotte Ross. And uh, we got two left here. Uh, Honaya Haka, if I'm saying that right, he's a lobbyist. Anywhere, as long as there are at least two helpless survivors of the colony for any vote in the game. Accept a vote to exile. Your vote counts as two votes. So he's got some influence over the other people's votes. And then George Coleman, the economist. And uh, he anywhere, if George is in your group, or sorry, is your group leader, uh, whenever you play a card from your hand to the waste pile, roll a die. If you roll a six, return the card to your hand after resolving this effect. That is pretty bonkers. So you can basically cycle cards and not fill up your waste pile with him as long as you're rolling sixes. That's pretty cool. So three characters seem to be only being able to use uh, in the module. I guess we can check the rule book on that uh, to be for sure. I'm sure it tells us right at the front. All cards in the Dead of Winter Warring Colonies expansion letter marked with the crosshair symbol in the lower right corner cannot be used in a normal game of Dead of Winter. Those cards are only used when playing the Warring Colonies variant. And then all cards in the Dead of Winter Warring Colony expansion, they're marked with those three bullets. Just to help you distinguish them from the other sets. So just like we thought, and let's see what other cards we got here. Assuming these are lone wolf cards of some kind. Oh, there is objectives. So we're not going to spoil any of that stuff. Uh, but know they're there. And look at all these beauty crossroads cards. So many. I love it. These games just load you with cards to make so much variance, so many options, so many different things happen every game. You can play this game so many times and you just get uh, so many so many different experiences, especially with different players and using different characters every time. It's, it's always different. There's your sand timer. Not sure what that's for, but it's probably for that simultaneous action play that it mentioned during the War and Colonies variant. There's your combat die. It's uh, get two of them here. So obviously one per colony, I would assume. And uh, I'll take a look at those. So pretty nice. Big 12-sided die. Very similar to the uh, exposure die from the other game, except for no blanks here. There seem to be no blanks. Um, but that's the dice. And another pack of cards here. Oh, you got your lone wolf missions. Let's open these here. So 
So you got your Lone Wolf mission cards. And we're not going to show you any of that stuff. Uh, we got our, we got some new, um, and these are all Warring Colony. Um, what do you call them? Like your objectives or setup cards. Basically to decide what, what's what's the goal of your missions. Uh, there's four of them there with hardcore, mode, hardcore modes on the back. And then we got some Crisis cards. And a few of them have the uh, Warring Colonies um, thing on the bottom. So I'm not going to spoil any of these for you. Because I know Dead of Winter is one of those games where like it's nice to have that discovery element. Where you shuffle up those random decks. Especially the first few times you play. You never know what's going to come up. And it's super shocking. It makes it a little harder. But then eventually once you start getting a feel for things. It's kind of like, you know, similar to, you know, living out in the uh, freezing cold. Trying to survive the winter after the zombie apocalypse. You start as days go by and, and you live each day. Add some more experience. You kind of know what to expect and what to deal with day to day. And how to prepare better. So that's how I look at it. So, yeah. Go in blind, folks. As much as you can, I think. Um... Here's some item decks. Oh man, way more. Look at all these items. Random items. So I'm not sure the idea with the random items. I don't know if they just get shuffled in different decks. Oh, Mice and Mystics, that's cool. You get a board game, raise morale by one. So I don't really want to show these either, just in case people don't really want to get into it. But all you need to know is there's tons of items. Some of them are, you know, you get a few copies of coffee here. But uh, you get some weapons, bullets, and these are Warring Colony uh, specific. So as you can see here, I'm going to estimate, you know, 20-ish percent of this expansion at least is probably maybe less, maybe less than 20 percent. But uh, you're going to need both uh, the other full games to get the full experience here out of Warring Colonies. So please know that going in. If you only have one Dead of Winter core set, getting this... You know, it might be all right. It'll add some new stuff to the games, which are cool. But if you want to get the full experience of this expansion, get both Dead of Winter games and play it. And both are awesome. You're not going to go wrong there. Um, yeah, you can start, start with either or. Just the original Dead of Winter is a little more simple. Like there's less stuff to it. Um, but then obviously Long Night is, you know, a full game plus some modules. Um, so you get, you get a bit more there in that box. And then here you have... I think these are the combat cards. So you probably get some of these in your hand and can play these during combat to add some effects. And we see here some of them, you know, plus one to combat, plus three to combat. If both play, if both colony leaders play on guard, combat ends immediately with no further effect. So we've seen this kind of combat uh, cards, um, combat <laughs> in uh, other, other board games before. Uh, it's nothing new, but... Uh, can't really give you a review on how that plays yet. This is just an unboxing, but like I said, uh, we'll get into it. So there's your standees. Ooh, exciting. Uh, we'll take a little look at the cardboard punch-out boxes here. we got the Lone Wolf Den there, another location. Uh, thick cardboard, just like the Long Night expansion, not flimsy sheets that were included in the original Dead of Winter. I don't know if they ever reprinted Dead of Winter uh, to include that cardboard. I don't know if you still buy Dead of Winter to this day a couple years later and you still get... Uh, flimsy paper sheets but don't worry you get the long night and uh comes with the cardboard replacements so you can re you, those are the ones you can use and you only need one set it looks like for this uh for this expansion and then you got your tracks here your bullets and here is some of the survivors uh actually all the survivor standees uh nice color nice art uh nice cardboard obviously uh seems similar to the other dead of winters in look and quality and size you got your bullet tokens and your uh, markers there to track on your combat tracks and lone wolf tracks or whatever that are included in the game. All right, so that is Dead of Winter Warring Colonies, uh, the Crossroads game expansion for Dead of Winter. So like I said, uh, it is an expansion that I would only recommend after you have at least one of the core sets, uh, Dead of Winter Crossroads game or Dead of Winter The Long Night, obviously. Um, but if you have both, even better, you can use everything in this expansion. Uh, so like I said earlier, stay tuned to this channel. Subscribe if you're new here. And uh, hit that little alarm bell notification button beside the subscribe button to be notified when new videos go up and when we go live. We're definitely going to play this uh, expansion. 
uh, added to some of the uh, either Dead of Winter core set, and uh, then we'll also try the Warring Colonies variant and the Lone Wolf variant uh, in gameplay videos going into more details how those work once I've actually sat down and read the rule book and uh, got some players together and figured that out. So more Dead of Winter coming up on the channel, guys. Stay tuned for that. And then after we play the game a few times, uh, I'll probably do a video of my thoughts on it or at least give our thoughts after some of those gameplay videos after we tried the expansion. So stay tuned for that, guys. More Dead of Winter coming up on the channel. Uh, like I said before, you can always see our other Dead of Winter videos on the channel already uh, on Rob's Gaming Table under the Dead of Winter playlist. Uh, and look for that link in the description below. But either way, thanks a lot, guys and gals, for watching. Uh, we'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks a lot.